So how reliable is the Mini John Cooper Works? Well, today we have my Mini John Cooper Works. This is a 2022 Mini John Cooper Works, F56, obviously. And I've had this car now since February of 2022. And in that amount of time, I've put 52,000 miles on it. And you're not hearing incorrectly, 52,000 miles. And that includes driving for my work and driving with the Mini JCW team. This car has seen a lot of things and it's been everywhere. And I genuinely mean everywhere. I have driven this car everywhere. Reliability wise, how reliable is it? Well, providing you aren't driving through the Southwest and hitting potholes on Interstate 40, very reliable in fact. Now, for those of you who know me, you know that I've replaced this wheel twice on my car as I've hit one pothole and it fell off the back of a golf cart at Circuit of the Americas. Now, some other reliability factors to take into consideration that I had to deal with on my car. And to be honest, none of these were the result of the car. They were a result of my own stupidity. To start with, this strut bearing on this side failed. Now it failed because I didn't see a large piece of rubber pressed up between an expansion joint on a bridge and I hit it going 70 miles per hour. Bent the wheel, snapped the headlight leveler and damaged the strut bearing. Now what's funny is I didn't even know that I had blown the strut bearing until I started hearing creaking noises coming from the side of the car. And the reason for that is they designed them so freaking well unlike the previous two generations, that when they fail, the suspension doesn't drop down. So I didn't know I had a strut bearing fail until I started hearing creaking noises at low speeds in parking lots from this side of the car. Come to find out, the bearing had failed, but it was also under 50,000 miles at the time, so warranty took care of it. So moving on from the strut bearing, what else has been done to the car maintenance wise? Routine oil changes, and at 50,000 miles, I did have my spark plugs replaced, so there's that. And by the way, Miniac top tip here. If you want to get a little bit more performance out of your engine and use OEM parts, BMW i8 spark plugs fit in this car perfectly. And the reason for that is the BMW i8 uses a three cylinder turbo motor that's used in the minis. In fact, I would say that the Mini Countryman hybrid powertrain is really just the BMW i8 powertrain turned around and detuned. So oil changes, spark plugs, strut bearing. And after my trip to Sonoma, I did have to replace the rear brake pads and rear discs. Now, the reason for that was the inboard rear pad on this wheel failed. Now it failed halfway into our trip and it started making squealing noises. The car still stopped. It was just annoyingly loud and nails on a chalkboard basically. So when I finally got the car home, I was able to get the pads off, get the rotors off and replace them. Now I could have reused them, but I obviously didn't want to because when I took this rotor off on the backside, it was completely scored up and ruined. So couldn't do that. You might be thinking to yourself, that can't be it. There has to be more. It's a BMW product. Everything has to be more. There's always more. Well, in the case of the Mini Cooper, there isn't. And in the case of this car, there hasn't been. It's been routine maintenance from day one. And I've had that experience with my last Mini. It was all routine maintenance. Now my previous generation minis, obviously they're gonna have issues as they get older. I wanna say this train's derailing very slowly or something because it is making way too much noise. There I go losing my train of thought again. It's the worst possible place to do videos. Now, of course, over owning the car for that short amount of time, there have been things I've done to the car. I changed out the hood scoop. I changed my little grill trim rod here, and I added a little piece of uh, grill plastic because with my road trips, I was concerned about things going through and hitting the intercooler. But otherwise, wheels and suspension and tires aside, not much else is different. I do need to get new tires. Now, the reason why is these Continentals are almost at the end of their lifespan. They are currently at 330 seconds of tread life left. And the reason for that is I drive a lot. Now you might be thinking, well, 52,000 miles and they've only been on the car for a short period of time. Well, short being about 38 to 45,000 miles. So how can they possibly be worn out right now? Well, we also have to factor in the Dragon. So there you go. That being said, I am gonna be buying new tires for the car and I'm open to suggestions. I've been told to consider going slightly larger tire wise. 215, 45, 18 was the suggestion as was 225, 40, 18. I don't know for sure as I do have coilovers on the car, I could raise it up a little bit to clear larger tires, but 
I kind of like the way it's currently sitting, so I'm thinking I may just have to stick with the 215 4018. What brand to buy is a different story. Now, everyone says Continental. I may end up going with Continental. And aside from the engine bay being a little dirty, I do need to wash it, and the usual rock chips and windshield scratches and chips and everything. It's pretty darn good looking for a 52,000 mile Mini Cooper. Now, when you tell someone that the car is only a year old, then they kind of look at you funny and wonder what the heck you've been doing. Well, I've been driving. And that's the whole point of this car. It is meant to be driven. Minis are meant to be driven. They don't like being babied. They like being flogged around a twisty road or even around a racetrack, which is why I've been attending all these races. So, and the dragon right there. So we got the dragon added to this whole list of uh, tracks and I have to add Road America next. I think I'm running out of room though. But otherwise, it's been a good car so far. 52,000 miles. I'm basically giving you all an accelerated long-term road test of an F56 Mini Cooper. So you're getting a view of this car that not many people are going to give you because most people drive within reasonable limits and I'm not one of those people. I take it further than the average person, obviously, but at least it looks good while it's doing it. But aside from normal wear and tear, which typically happens with a car, at this mileage, it's been incredibly reliable. And that's saying something because I know a lot of people out there think the Mini Coopers are very unreliable cars. And truth be told, the previous two generations, hmm, just a bit. And I say just a bit because I never actually experienced an incredibly unreliable Mini Cooper, but I know a lot of people out there have. The thing is, routine maintenance, getting to problems before they become a big problem, that's how you keep these cars going. Now, the thing with the current generation Minis is these engines are so good that there's really not much you can do to them to really hurt them. I've seen people hurt them, and I'm kind of trying to figure out how the heck did you manage to damage an engine in one of these cars? Because that's not an easy thing to do. In fact, it's so not easy that Mini is continuing to use these engines with the next generation cars. The fourth generation internal combustion hatchbacks are going to use these same engines, and I think even the new Countryman is going to use the same engines. They're that good that Mini is continuing to use them rather than designing new motors, and I think it's the adage that if it ain't broke, don't fix it. They are going to upgrade the tuning a little bit on them, improve horsepower, obviously, improve torque, obviously, and maybe a few little tweaks here and there. But overall, it's going to be the same engines that are currently in these cars. Now, you might argue then that why wouldn't Mini want to increase the horsepower on the vehicle? Well, in my opinion, 2,700 pound car with 228 horsepower and 236 torque is plenty. I don't think it needs to get any more powerful than it currently is. I think this JCW hatchback at this current horsepower is adequate. I don't think there's any changes that need to be done. Now, I could argue that they need to include the JCW Pro suspension as a factory installed accessory. But if they did that, it'd be a pain in the butt to get these on the car haulers. I've seen how they put them on the car haulers. They definitely need the increased height in the suspension. So after all is said and done, what are my continued plans with this 2022 Mini John Cooper Works? I intend to continue to drive it. Now, you might be thinking maybe I should upgrade. It's already a higher mileage car, but I think it's pretty good the way it is, and I'm not inclined to want to get something new at the moment, especially when I still got more plans for this car. There's still more things I need to do. Maybe not mechanically speaking, but maybe suspension wise, sway bar, maybe these wheels aren't the last set of wheels that's gonna grace this car, who knows. And to be honest, I'm mildly curious what the fourth generation minis are gonna look like in terms of the side skirts, because this is an interesting thing. When they facelifted the cars, they did the front bumper and they did the rear bumper but they didn't change the side skirts. So I'm kind of curious to find out if they could possibly be installed on this car. Could be pretty cool. Now, if you haven't noticed, the car has a different livery than when I started. It has yellow stripes, it has white circles. It's missing a 74 here because I had the bonnet stripes redone. It has vintage style numbers too. I thought I was giving it a vintage race car look. Instead, what I kind of ended up with was something akin to a Lotus race car. I like how the car looks right now. I might make other changes in terms of vinyl. I might make other cosmetic changes. Maybe change out the headlight rings for black ones. Maybe do the same thing for the taillights. Who knows? Tell me if you think maybe I should do checkered mirror caps, perhaps. Or if I can find a way to wrap them in yellow, could do that too. Now, of course, I'm open to suggestions for things to do on the car as well as things to do on the channel. So comment below and let me know what you think I should do next on the car. Let me know what you want to see video wise on the channel. If it's something that I can do and not have any issues getting it done, I'll do it. 
like what you see, check out more content on this channel at the end of this video, and thanks for watching.